All right, happy Monday, happy release day, uh, happy May 22nd, and welcome to this platform backend update. My name is Dawel Maan, and as some of you might know, I am the platform backend lead at GitLab, and for those who might not know, uh, now you do. Over the last, I'm gonna give you a quick update of what um, the platform backend team worked on over the last five weeks and what we are planning to do in the next five weeks. Um, first, in the last five weeks, on April 22nd, we released GitLab 9.1, exactly a month ago, um, with uh, such features as product protected tags, Microsoft Teams integration, and a number of performance improvements. Of course, there was far more stuff in this release than just these three things, um, but these are some of the bigger things that um, my team specifically worked on. If you want to get an idea of what we worked on besides that, check out that little more link that should be in the document that uh, will be shared along with this video, or you can just have a look at the blog post that is linked from the GitLab 9.1 link. Um, then we also finalized GitLab 9.2 on May 7th, exactly two weeks ago, and we are releasing GitLab 9.2 today, which I will talk a little bit about in a minute. And then on May 8th, we already started development of GitLab 9.3 um, as well. And I'll tell you in a minute as well what we are um, planning to put into that. So today on um, this 22nd of May, as every 22nd of the month, we are releasing a new version of GitLab. Some of the major things that the platform backend team worked on are, first of all, an internationalized cycle analytics. That means that the cycle analytic page is now set up to um, support you know, different languages than just English. To start, we have introduced Spanish and German support for this page. And then over time, we are slowly internationalizing more pages inside GitLab until uh, the product is you know, translated to such an extent that we can actually um, start advertising it as multilingual. At this point, the support is still relatively limited since it's only one page, but at least this sets up the groundwork for more pages being translated. Uh, and this was something that was worked on by Ruben and Phil primarily. Second, we have a more robust backend for repository push mirrors. Um, as you might be aware, in Enterprise Edition, we have a feature called uh, repository mirror, and these, this has two flavors. One is the push mirrors, where every time uh, a push is created inside GitLab, every time data is pushed into GitLab, an other Git repo uh, on a different machine is deemed to the mirror, and this is automatically updated. We also have repository pool mirrors, which means that GitLab gets automatically updated when another remote repo, for example, on a different GitLab instance or on um, you know, a GitHub or Bitbucket or another hand-rolled Git solution is updated, uh, GitLab will automatically get updated. But with 9.2, we are bringing a more robust backend, which means that the um, GitLab instance will not be under so much stress every hour when every repository tries to update itself, for example, but it's a little bit um, more sensibly spread out over time. Uh, thanks, Tiago, for working on that. Third, we have redirects after user group or project is renamed. This is a feature that has been, um, has been requested for ages. Um, and we finally have it. And we, what this means is that any of these things is renamed or, or project is transferred between two groups or for whatever reason, um, you know, the old URL doesn't work anymore. Uh, it will continue to work in the browser. The user will get a flash message um, alerting them of the change and asking them to update any bookmarks they might have or other links they might have. Um, and one thing that you'll be happy to know is that in 9.3, we are expanding this to work with Git remotes. So if you push to a Git remote that was renamed, the push will be rejected, but the push error message will tell you, run this little command to update the URL to the new URL. This is not in 9.3 yet, but that's gonna, 9.2 yet, but that's gonna happen in 9.3. And thanks Mike for working on that. Mike actually started working on that before he joined GitLab, but he joined GitLab uh, about five weeks ago and he um, finished this as a first feature, first issue he worked on at GitLab. Um, fourth, we have a number of disaster recovery alpha improvements. Um, these are mostly UI related, but as always, there are also uh, you know, behind, the, behind the scenes changes there. Discover disaster recovery is a feature of GitLab Geo, which is an enterprise edition premium feature. Uh, and we are hard, working hard to um, make this a disaster recovery solution that our customers can depend on if they um, you know, want that kind of thing. Uh, you can click that link to find out more about exactly what changes were made. But this is an effort that's been going on for months and months. And every month we are um, making improvements there. Thanks, Douglas and Gabriel, for working on that. Uh, then we also have 
have six, a fifth, but um, not least, we have advanced search with Elasticsearch, um, which means that if you have Elasticsearch enabled on your GitHub instance, which you can do if you have uh, Enterprise Edition Starter, you can use advanced search, which means that you can use and, you can use or, you can use negation, uh, all kinds of things. If you click that link, you'll see more detail about exactly what this feature looks like. Um, and thanks a lot, Nick, for working on that this month. Of, you know, besides all of the other Elasticsearch improvements you have been working on recently. Um, if you've been using Elasticsearch as an EE customer, you will likely have found that the performance and the, the, the quickness of it updating after a push, et cetera, um, has, has improved dramatically over the last couple of months. And this is mostly thanks to Nick, um, as well as Valeria, who has been helping out there. So that's 9.2, what we're releasing today. Uh, if you want to know more about what's in 9.2, uh, things built by the other teams, for example, or just things that were, um, you know, nice, but not big enough to mention in this particular video, feel free to check out that GitLab 9.2 link at the very top. So then, on to the next five weeks. On the next five weeks, we tend, tend, uh, intend to enable Elasticsearch on GitHub.com, uh, which means that that advanced feature will also be coming to GitHub.com. I also ha I already had this on the in the next five weeks sheet for last month's update, um, but because of some resource constraints, we were not actually able to get this done in time. Uh, but in the next five weeks, we hope we will. But this will dramatically improve search performance for all of GitHub.com, uh, project-wide search as well as search on the entire instance uh, will be much much faster and it will be much smarter about finding what you're looking for since what you're looking for doesn't need to be an exact match um, Elasticsearch is smart enough to uh, interpret your query interpret your search terms and find the thing you might you're most likely to be looking for then on June 7th uh, we plan to finalize GitLab 9.3 and on the 22nd of June we intend to release it the first thing this will bring is a more robust backend for repository pool mirrors this is kind of the um, other side of the coin to repository push mirrors which I was just talking about but repository pool mirrors also has this problem where every hour every mirror repository tries to update itself which means of course that um, you know there will be a huge memory use and cpu use spike on your machine uh, and with this um, you know more robust backend which is pretty much a complete rewrite um, we intend to spread this a little bit more over time uh, which should have your gitlab instance less um, you know less 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 i you know, I can't find the words, but I'm sure you know what I mean. The, 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 thing that you'll, uh, the thing that you'll notice here as a user is that once this is deployed, um, GitLab will not have this little spike of activity every hour, which affects users' web requests as well. So right now, it sometimes happens that on this hour when everything's updated, uh, web, requ web requests get slightly slower. Um, and this will be a thing of the past when this goes in with GitLab 9.3. Um, another thing we're going to work on for Enterprise Edition Premium is to improve our audit logging functionality. One thing we're doing is adding a global audit logging page to the admin area. And other things we're doing are just kind of looking through everything that we currently log, everything that would be nice to log, to um, log more things that our customers might be interested in. In a future iteration, we'll also improve um, the kind of the, the ways of exporting this audit log, for example, to a syslog D or to something similar to that. Because right now, it's only inside GitLab itself, uh, which is um, a little bit limited if you actually have auditing requirements for, for, you know, because of the industry that you are using your GitLab instance in. Um, the third thing we're working on is an internationalized project and repository files page, uh, which is the second step in this, you know, internationalizing all of GitLab effort. Um, this is something that, that Bob is working on currently, and it's kind of the same idea where we convert this whole page to look up all of its strings in a translation file, and then we add German and Spanish translations. The reason we add Spanish and German specifically is uh, on one end because Spanish is, of course, one of the most widely used languages in the world. But the reason we use Germany is not just because it's um, you know spoken in Germany and Austria, etc., but also because Germany has the interesting property, or German rather, has the interesting property of being a lot longer than English like a lot longer in number of characters needed to um, say something, really. So that means that our user interface, which we've built for English strings, might break down in interesting ways if we introduce German strings. And that's exactly why we are doing uh, German as well as Spanish. Um, the fourth thing that's being worked on is new per group and user EE license backend for GitLab.com. Um, this is not something that you will care about if you're just um, a customer of GitLab running GitLab on premises, but this is extremely important for GitLab.com since we will be um, selling bronze, silver, and gold plans where users will be able to buy certain um, Enterprise Edition Starter and Enterprise Edition Premium features per group, 
so they can buy a feature, they can pay a monthly fee. And if they do that, their group and all the projects inside that group will get access to a feature like file locks, et cetera, et cetera. But this is an effort to um, make the GitLab become more interesting to these kind of enterprise um, customers who want to use those features. Um, fifth, we are introducing, or rather we are reintroducing LDAP user sync at login. Um, a while ago, we had a refactor of LDAP user sync, which meant that all of the user's L permissions, uh, if you use LDAP with your GitLab instance, are synced um, on a schedule. So for example, once every hour, I don't know exactly what the time is there, but let's just go with once every hour, which means that it could take up to an hour for any changes inside LDAP to actually propagate to GitLab. Um, we did this because of performance reasons and it's you know worked pretty well, but um, this also means that if a user logs in again, they might have access to projects they shouldn't have access to, or um, they would have no access to projects they should have access to. So now besides the scheduled sync, we also do async every time a user logs in. So if a user tells us like, hey, I don't, I can't see my project uh, because the LDAP sync is you know, behind, instead of telling them, well, wait an hour, we can just tell them, uh, or you can tell the people within your company, um, sign out and sign in again, and you automatically get this access. Um, six, we are also working on uh, performance issues, specifically on the blob project list and the user and group activity pages. Um, of course, we're working on performance issues every month and we are kind of trying to go with the, the, the most urgent ones based on exactly how slow they are and how you know, frequently used they are. Uh, the project list and those activity feeds are of course really big features of GitLab. It's kind of the page where you land when you go you know, to the, to the root page of your GitLab instance, but this will be a great improvement. Instead of having to wait a couple seconds for these to load, they will be much, much faster. Um, and we're also improving the performance of loading blobs. Blobs are not particularly slow right now, but because, because blobs, which are basically files inside your GitLab repo, um, because they are rendered using syntax highlighting, um, they're not really slow, but they take a relatively large performance hit on our machines because the syntax highlighting is relatively uh, complex and involved. So this will not make the page much faster, notably, but it will at least um, hurt the GitLab instance less when someone is viewing a file like this. Um, of course, this is just a selection of six, six, six things we're going to be working on. Other teams have awesome stuff in store, and of course, my team uh, does the same, the platform team does. So check out that more link, and you'll find things, or just filter by the 9.3. Um, I'll in GitLab, and you'll see everything that we are planning to work on during this month. And then on June 8th, after we have finalized 9.3 on the 7th, we will start development of 9.4. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the next five weeks. And then in five weeks, I hope to tell you exactly how much of that we managed to get done and what we're planning to get into 9.4. Um, so now is the time for questions. So I'm gonna have a quick look at the chat, see if anything, anyone asked anything that hasn't already been answered for someone else. Uh, um, there's questions about Elasticsearch. I think that the most, um, a proper person to answer those would be Nick, who I see was already involved in the conversation. Um, let me see. <laughs> Nick suggests adding a right to left language. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is something we'll do at some point, but this brings a lot of complexity with it that uh, we can hold off for a while if we choose to just support um, you know, left to right languages for a while. So as Job points out, not in a long, long time that we're gonna do this. Um, all right, that looks like it for questions and no one has added anything since I um, asked for questions. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, I will see some of you in five weeks when I have another update like this and other, others of you in 15 minutes in our GitLab team call. Have a good rest of your day.